Welcome to another production of Park TV 16 Sports. We're on location tonight at the home of the St. Louis Park Orioles and we are bringing you non-conference varsity volleyball featuring the St. Louis Park Orioles taking on the Burnsville Blaze. And this is the first game of the season for both teams. I'm Robert Christensen. I'll be bringing the commentary along with the action tonight. Glad you're with us. And we are about to begin the Blaze in yellow and black. Of course, St. Louis Park in their black with orange trim. And we're about to begin. And I can tell you there's a lot of excitement and energy in this gymnasium. This St. Louis Park team, we've been watching them, or I've been watching them for three years now, and I've been watching some of these seniors and juniors grow up on this court, and I think St. Louis Park has a lot of reason to be optimistic coming into the season. They are led by two stellar players, Reagan Alexander, six feet tall, and Kendall Coley leading the way up front. And we are about to begin, and with the ball serving to start it off is Shannon Murray, a 5'7 junior captain for the Blaze. And we're underway here from St. Louis Park High School, and the 2019 volleyball season is underway for your Orioles. And after the first serve, that shot by number 18, Shannon Murray goes long. So St. Louis Park draws first blood in this first match of the year. And that ball just sails long there. Good job by St. Louis Park recognizing that. And now for their first service tonight is number 15 for St. Louis Park. That's, of course, Michaela Winward, another experienced senior. And she scores on that serve. And now it's quickly 2-0. And Winward will serve again. Here's that replay off balance there by Murray. And there is the height, experience, and balance of number 12, Kendall Coley putting that right back down for point number two. Now the serve by Winward, and here comes the dunk shot, and handled by St. Louis Park. Now Winward to Coley, and she does a dink shot, and it's still alive. Nice job, but they call it down. So great action there. The Blaze desperately diving for that ball, but unable to dig it, and here is a nice another dink shot. I don't know what else to call it by Kendall Coley. Nice dive there by the Blaze, but unable to come up with it. So 3-0 here early on. And Winward with the serve. Gets it in. Now big shot there from number 10. That was Emma Freitan for the Blaze. And now Faith Johnson, number four from the near side, spikes it deep in the corner. And boy, is Faith Johnson off to a great start here in this season. The junior outside hitter, look at her extend on that and get it down in the empty corner. 4-0 St. Louis Park. Great start here by Winward and the Orioles. Going for her fourth consecutive point. And there's a dink shot and nicely done there. Number two, Karina Benson for the Blaze asserts herself and nice touch on that, finding the open spot. Let's see the replay here. Really nicely done here. Oh, there it was, yep, just found that soft spot. Well done by Benson. Keep an eye on her and now she'll serve down four to one. Winward gets four points and that's hammered by Coley, number 12. Blaze save it miraculously. Now the Orioles and Coley once again delivers the punishment. And number 12 for the Blaze, unable to handle it, Megan Hermstad. But there, number 12, Coley. She is just getting warmed up. If you're just joining us, she is a treat to watch, folks. That lists her as a senior, but I think she's only a junior. I could be wrong about that. I thought Coley and Reagan Alexander were the same class as that ball leads to another point for Park, and they are now up six to one, and back to serve for the Orioles. That's Hannah Howell, the junior outside hitter. Set one of a best of five in this non-conference matchup. Burnsville coming out of the South Suburban, and they're unable to get the ball back across the net, so another point for the Orioles, and now a quick timeout here, and a good job for a timeout, or a good time for a timeout, I should say, if your coach, Josh Westfelt, and the Brave there will rally around. They're off to a tough start on the road against a formidable opponent in St. Louis Park. Trying to think if I were the Blaze coach here, what to say. I mean, they are facing a very talented team here. Just to hang in there, just take a breather here. There's really not a lot to say here early in the first game of the first set of the first match of the season. So I think it's just good to take a break, clear their heads. 
tell them they're doing great and uh, tighten up a few things here and there. As we look at some of the fans, as I indicated, there is energy in the crowd before the match. A good crowd here on one of the most beautiful August summer nights you can imagine. It's got to be 75 degrees, light winds, no humidity, beautiful night. It's very warm here in the gym, but nevertheless, a big crowd on hand. Lots of students here in support of St. Louis Park. Lots of parents. I'd say there's at least a couple hundred people here which I think speaks to the talent on this St. Louis Park team and the excitement surrounding their program this year. It'll be fun to see where they go. Okay, we're back out of the timeout and serving once again was uh, Hannah Howell and ball still alive now. That was Johnson and that ball sails wide out of bounds. So point and turnover goes to the Blaze. The score is 7-2 and back to do the honors of serving is number 12, Megan Hermstead. She's a senior, five foot six outside hitter, and she gets that serve in. And now Coley delivers it, but this one sails a little long. So now two consecutive points for the Blaze, seven to three. Good job there by number two, Karina Benson, getting out of the way, and now a second service opportunity here for Hermstead. A little confusion there by the Orioles. Like you're gonna see that here in game one. And nice dunk shot there by number six for the Blaze. Julia Dam, the senior outside hitter, five foot eight, finds the soft spot. And now the Blaze making a comeback here with three consecutive points. Look at her fake it out as she's gonna go for the big hit and then finds the soft spot just behind the first line. All right, now service in. Faith Johnson finds the spot there. Number four, Faith Johnson. Good, solid veteran player out there for the Orioles. Stops the three-point run by the Blaze and now back to serve. Number six for the Orioles. That is, excuse me, that's number zero. Who is that? Not sure if we have her number in the calendar here on the schedule as that point goes to the Blaze. So even though the, or no, it goes to the Orioles. That is number zero and I do not have a number name for her, I'll try to come up with that. But she gets a point and it's nine to four, St. Louis Park and the front line struggles with that. That was 14, Reagan Alexander getting her first chance at the net there. And that results in a turnover to the Blaze. Nine to five is your score. Some substitutions now in for the Blaze there. You can see number five is Kara Clavens as she'll come in to serve at 9-5, so Burnsville back in this match after being down 7-1, it's now 9-4. They try to get the ball back over the net and number 12, Hermstead does that successfully. Now here comes Reagan Alexander and she gets stuffed at the net and she's gonna get another shot. No, and we got a whistle and a violation. It could have been a net or neutral zone violation on the Orioles, so the ball turns over and now it's 9-6 and back to serve is Clavens once again. Ball gets over. Bumped there by number nine, Berglund, and now the point goes to St. Louis Park. Here's that replay. The set to Reagan Alexander, and then she delivers the block, unable to thwart that attempt, so Reagan Alexander, one for two at the net on spike attempts. Service there by Faith Johnson and blocked at the net. Number nine, Berglund getting up there. Not the tallest woman out there. Are All these women are tall. I was standing on the court and even the shorter ones, what they look like on screen are very tall. And look at that block there. And that was Reagan Alexander. Two for three at the net now for Alexander. And that serve unable to be handled by Karina Benson now leads to a 12-6 lead for St. Louis Park. And back to serve once again, Faith Johnson, going for her third consecutive point, 12-6 here in the first game of this five-set match. Blaze in trouble, that ball sails on number five, that was Clavens trying to save it, and that ball curved right out of bounds, so Faith Johnson now going for her fourth consecutive point. The junior outside hitter, a lot of experience on this St. Louis Park team. Her shot is in, her serve now, a, oh, botched attempt there by Clavens. Or no, that was Julia Dam, the outside hitter, senior captain. And now a second timeout taken by Josh 
Was fed the head coach for the Blaze as he sees his team now down eight here, and that'll be a one minute timeout. Looking at the schedule here for St. Louis Park, these are the first few matches are non-conference. They're hosting Burnsville this Saturday. There's a look at their early schedule. Then they've got Jordan here at home coming up on Saturday. And that says 9 a.m., so an early morning. That's a, actually part of the Dinah High School Side Out Classic. So if you want to watch some great volleyball, Dinah always has a strong program. So a tournament all day long. There'll probably be several games played by St. Louis Park. But then they've got Coon Rapids and Eastview, both also non-conference. And then they start up with the conference season on September 3rd at Robbinsdale Armstrong. Then St. Elbow, St. Michael Albertville, and then Hopkins back in the conference. So four non-conference matches to start the season here. Two at home and then a tournament and two matches on the road. So out of the timeout, Faith Johnson still at the service line going for her fifth consecutive point. Up 14-6 and that service is in and deep. And number six, Dam does get it over. Now the set and that was Reagan Alexander and she finds the soft spot, I believe it was. I was blocked by the referee from my vantage point. Let's see if the replay can. Yep, there it is, Reagan Alexander. Nice touch there, rather than just hammering it. And she just didn't do a touch shot on the first line. That was a touch shot all the way to the back corner. That is talent, that is much more difficult to do. Nice job by Reagan Alexander, and now that ball fails to make it over the net, and now another point for Faith Johnson and the Orioles, and she is certainly on a roll here. Very steady, and the key is, is she's getting the ball in, making Burnsville play it. That is half the battle when you're serving in volleyball. And that ball also in, again. Now Clavens, nice dink shot. Berglund there to get it, and here comes the, oh, a little miscommunication on the set shot. Now the plays with a chance, and they score, number 11. Nice spike there by Kyla Frankie coming up to take advantage, just a freshman, but at five foot 10, boy, look at that power there, and goes off Johnson's hands. With frustration there by Johnson, probably wondering if she should have let it go. Would have been close had it gone out. But nice job by Faith Johnson getting about eight points on that service go around. Now the Blaze on their service attempt gets it over. Here comes a chance to Alexander. She hammers it home and they call it out. Boy, that was close. The woman is right there on the line. Let's see here if we can get a good look at this replay. Nice back set there to Reagan Alexander. And yeah, good call. Definitely wide, great camera shot there by our camera crew here at Park TV 16. And now Reagan Alexander, this time she gets it in and it goes off the hands of Kara Clevens. And now it's 17 to eight. And the service goes back to St. Louis Park. As their lead now increases to nine and back to serve is number nine for St. Louis Park. Elsa Berglund, the sophomore outside hitter, and she takes a jump serve. Nice job to the back row. Clavins now up to number two. That is Benson, and that ball goes out of bounds. So a point for Burnsville, and it is now 17 to nine. Lead remains eight. Now back to serve is this up and coming star, I would say for Burnsville, the freshman, five foot 10. Frankie gets the ball in. And nice play there. Hannah Howell, the junior outside hitter, finds the soft part in the zone, deep in the left-hand corner. Now Alexander comes back in, or excuse me, Kendall Coley now in the front line in the middle. And back to serve is Reagan Alexander. So smart coaching, I would say, by Missy Murano, always having one or the other on the front line. And that ball is another point for Reagan Alexander and the Orioles as they are now a 10 point lead, their first double digit lead of the evening here in game one. They are cruising to a victory here, it looks like. Let's see if they can keep it going, and that ball, the first miss on a serve I can remember tonight by the Orioles. So now it's 19 to 10 and back to serve for Burnsville is number 18, Shannon Murray. Five foot seven junior captain. 
And her flat-footed serve is in. And now Hannah Howell delivers the punishment and it's saved by Burnsville. Back to Ellison as she'll try to dink it over. Diving is Faith Johnson and the tip, but I think there's a net violation on the Orioles. So the point goes to the Blaze. Great action here. Look at Ellison and the dive by Johnson as she gets it. And just unable to control it there was Kendall Coley as she went into the net. She got a body control at the front of the net there. So important. Look at Berglund come in there from out of nowhere. Coley saves it. Now here comes the Blaze with a chance to score. Johnson bumps it. Close to the net. And nice job there by number 15, Michaela Winward. As she dinks it over on that set from the back row by Howell, I believe. Or was that Johnson? Nevertheless, back to serve. Michaela Winward, the senior. 20 to 11, nine point lead, closing in on the victory here on game one. Ellison, nice bump there. Back to her, she spikes it and just misses. Wide, deep on the right side there. Watch this here, she came close. It just sailed on her just a little bit. Out by about a foot. So Winward now with a 10 point lead, 21 to 11, serves. And right back to Ellison, almost off the ceiling and great serve. That was all about the serve there on Winward's part. Ellison unable to handle the power and it got away from her. Watch how it just gets away from her all the way up out of our picture screen. And then just an easy touch there by, I think that was Coley. 22 to 11, the largest lead of the night. Winward goes short with it this time. Ellison now with the spike. Saved there by Winward, and Hannah Howell, off balance, spike attempt, gets it over. Now here comes Ellison, and Winward. Addie Warg is who that is. That's number eight out there, not zero. Point though to Burnsville on that sequence, and now Ellison back to serve, down 10. Ellison with the serve. St. Louis Park closing in on a victory and that ball into the top of the net. Not a lot of loft on that set really was the problem. Got to get that ball up high enough and it was barely high enough in my estimation there. Could have been a little higher, that's better. And look at that spike. Hannah Hall there delivers Peter. And there you can see the difference. Look how high that ball gets up. They all be say, look at that. That the spike is really about the set. That was beautiful. Boy, Hannah Howell can bring the power. Now she's back to serve. There she is. Jump serve deep. Boy, a lot of their serves are in this year. So far, a nice spike there by number six for the Blaze. Not going away easily here. Now cut the lead to nine. Blaze showing to be quite formidable here. They kind of got hit a little star-eyed there early on. They were down seven to one, but they've played pretty evenly here with St. Louis Park. Uh, they've kind of woken up here on the road, first game, and now that's off the St. Louis Park, and now it's 23-15. Still a good, comfortable lead. They're just a few points away from victory, but they gotta close it out here. And that is going to probably be a question for this senior team, is learning how to get that killer instinct, close these matches out. And there's a nice spike off the basket. That's in, folks. And the Blaze, nice job adjusting to that uh, barrier there. Now Johnson, great dig there by number 12, Hermstead for the Blaze. Back over, out, and someone's got to save it. Faith Johnson gets it back to the first row only. Look out, big spike, saved by Howell. Nice bump there, this could be trouble. Faith Johnson. And another nice dig there by Benson, but it goes out of bounds. Wow, that was great volleyball action. And now it's 24-15, and this means game point. And in to do the honors is Addie Ward, number eight in the white jersey. There she is. And she is anxious to end this game right now. And it goes off, and that's it. Game one goes to St. Louis Park. Come on back for game number two. What if being in recovery from a mental or substance use disorder was something we proudly showed the world? You might be surprised. 
millions of people are in recovery, sharing hope, help, and support with family, friends, and community. Join the Voices for Recovery. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders, for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Welcome back to St. Louis Park High School and Park TV 16 sports production of Varsity Volleyball. In this new 2019 season, we are bringing you St. Louis Park Orioles girls varsity volleyball, and they have just won game number one, 25 to 15. They're taking on their non-conference foe here in the Burnsville Blaze out of the suburban South Suburban Conference and of course St. Louis Park, the Metro West, and St. Louis Park in their dark uniforms started out very, very well. Got off to a seven to one lead. Blaze then sort of woke up and challenged a little bit and then Faith Johnson started serving and she reeled off eight or nine in a row and that really put some distance between these two teams in game one. The Blaze did show some signs of offense. They got to 15 points, but they ended up losing by 10. So we'll see if that pattern changes here in game two and it's very warm in the gym here. It's a beautiful 70 degree August night outside. But inside this gymnasium where there's a lot of people, especially on the side of our camera view, uh, here exciting uh, atmosphere. St. Louis Park has a good team this year. I think they'll challenge for the conference championship and makes do some damage in the section playoffs as long as they stay healthy and continue to improve. But they've got a lot of experienced talent and it starts with that woman right there, number 15, Michaela Winward, the senior. And you can hear the excitement, a lot of cheering here, a lot of people here watching this game on a beautiful night. They could all be outside enjoying this weather, but they're here watching volleyball. That tells you something about the Oriole team, I believe, this year. And we're off to game number two in this best of five. And the Blaze now with the ball, trying to get the serve back and unable to get it across. That was number six, Julia Dam. Or number five, I should say, Kara Clavins. Unable to get it over, so Winward off to another great start, just as she did in game one. Missy Murano, the head coach, has got to be pleased with what she's seeing here early on. And Winward with serve number two, and trouble for the Blaze, but number one, Anna Fumacadzinkio gets it across and stops the trend there. So now it's one to one. And back to start off the serving for Burnsville, as she did in game one, is Shannon Murray, the five foot seven junior captain and she gets her serve in and Winward oh tried to get it to Coley overran it but she actually got back to it and was able to make the play great body control watch Coley overrun this set little miscommunication whoops go back and then just her reaction that's just pure natural talent right there nice job by Coley recovering on that set and another big time serve by Winward, handled barely there by Hermstead for Burnsville. Now Coley brings the power, and the Blaze save it. Nice dive there by Anna Fomasenkio, and a point goes to St. Louis Park. They're up three to one. Great volleyball action there, folks. And now Hannah Howell, the junior outside hitter. One of the powerful Orioles on this team. And her jump serve is in. And there's some pace on that ball, folks. Burnsville playing it well. Nice dive there by Addie Ward. Faith Johnson, nice dive there by the Blaze Hermstead, but not enough, and now it's four to one. Orioles off to a great start here in game number two, and watch Faith Johnson as she finds it, and diving there is Hermstead, the senior, five foot six, Liberio, and now another serve that's in by Halp, and she really brings the power. Now Faith Johnson, now she's a little off balance and a little back in between the first and second row. Would have been a tough shot. Goes into the net, so point to the Blaze. Your score is four to two. We got a substitution now back in for the Blaze. Julia Dam, the captain, and back to serve. There you see Emma Freitham, the five foot nine junior. Outside hitter gets that serve in at four two. Faith Johnson gets it over, dive there by Fredberg. And now the outside hitter. Saved by number 15, that's Winward, and to the back net, by, back row I should say. Burnsville unable to handle it. Great job by the Orioles there, just 
Consistent pressure, getting that ball back over the net. Five to two is your score. And now a substitution as Reagan Alexander now comes into the front row just as Kendall Coley leaves. So there's always gonna be a six footer. So Faith Johnson and Kendall Coley on the front line along with Elsa Berglund. And look at Addie Ward. Oh my goodness, we've gotta see that replay if possible. That was incredible what she just did there. And that ball is out. Addie Ward saved that point. My goodness, she took that ball, that spike out of thin air. Here it is. Look at this. Bang, and then watch that. And for her to control that and get that in and set that up, amazing by Addie Ward. 5-3 and Kent, oh, that's Reagan Alexander. Block and point goes to St. Louis Park. Blaze were in the net. Score now six to three and back to serve Faith Johnson. She was with us during game one. She railed off about eight or nine in a row. That really put some distance in the score in game one. Let's see if she can do it again. And we got a violation. And this time it goes against the Orioles. Looks like it was a net violation, most likely. And the ball and the point goes to the Blaze. So they're hanging tougher here in game two early on at 6-4. So much improvement, and there is some talent on that Blaze team. They don't quite have the firepower of Alexander and Coley and Johnson and Howell and Winward. But they get a point there, and now they draw to within one, their closest of the match, and of course, the closest in this game at 6'5". Now back to serve, Kara Clavens. Just five foot three junior. Gets it in, and Howell unable to, oh no, goes off the ceiling, and that's fair game, and Howell saves it along with Ward. Now the Blaze, big spike and blocked by Winward. Berglund to Winward. Now to Reagan Alexander, and she delivers the spike. Wow. That is big time volleyball there, folks. Got to feel good for number one fork. Watch this great back set. Here comes Reagan Alexander. Pure joy when you watch these girls make those kind of plays. Nice save there. And a spike from the back row goes out. Good recognition by the back row for the Orioles. And now back to serve number nine, Elsa Berglund. Boy, the entertainment value of St. Louis Park Volleyball does not disappoint, folks. There's Elsa Berglund. All these girls are great to watch. There are really no weaknesses in their lineup. Now Winward to Howell. And that's another point. Get the feeling that Park is really starting to cruise here. Here's that other replay. And the set to Hannah Howell. Unable to handle it is the front line of the Blaze, and now Elsa Bergman will serve again at 9-5, and this time it goes into the net. Only the second service that I can remember in a game and a half here that St. Louis Park has missed on a serve. So a second unforced error, but if they're gonna be truly great, they've gotta keep those to a minimum, and I would say that they have here through game and a half. Now Howell, and that ball is called out. Looked like it was out by my eye, but maybe we can have a replay there. The flag person, I don't know. Well, it looks like she did call it out before it got there, but let's see here. Looks like we do have it, Hannah Howell. Ooh, that was closer than I even thought. No protest from the Oriole bench. No replay at this level anyway. Well, we have replay, but not official replay. Now Ward, Howell. Doesn't get all of it that she wants. Ball still alive. And point go to the Blaze. And now they're within one. And the junior varsity and the sophomore team is providing most of the enthusiasm for the Blaze here on their side of the court. And they have got to be feeling good here after kind of getting handled there in game one. They find themselves only down a point here in game two. And nice job there by Winward. Stop. The streak there by the Blaze, and maybe a little bit of a letdown here for St. Louis Park. Game one, a lot of energy leading up to game one. Now they've got to learn how to manage a match, keep their energy levels up, and don't be subject to a letdown. And now Cole and Reagan Alexander misfires on that serve. So that's two unforced errors in a row from the service line 
for St. Louis Park as they hold on to a one point lead. And now back to serve is the freshman, Kyla Frankie, the five foot 10, ninth grader, gets it in. Now Hannah Howell delivers the spike and diving but unable to save it is number five, Kara Clevins for Burnsville. Now it's 11 to nine, so now a two point lead and the service goes back to Michaela Winward. Number 15, who is their starting server. Let's see if she can get some distance in the scoreboard now here in game two. Gets that ball in, big spike, and that ball is in. Well done by number 10, Emma Fredheim, the junior five foot nine outside hitter. Delivers a beautiful shot there, splitting Warg and Berglund there in the corner. Nothing you can do about that, that's just a great shot. So the Blaze showing some fortitude here, some spunk, if you will. And that serve, oh, a little lazy on that. It looked like she might have went to sleep there a little bit. Shannon Murray. Service falls short. And now a two-point lead, and Hannah Howell back to serve, number 17. And that gets in. And the bump set spike handled by Winward. Now Ward to Berglund. Berglund's shot, blocked at the line, and they were in the net on that block attempt by the Blaze, I believe. That was the cause of the whistle. That's an infraction, point to St. Louis Park, and they've opened up now a three-point lead. Hannah Howell there, the big deep breath. Really focusing in, and now she gets that serve to go right off the fingertips of number 10, Fredheim. Four-point lead at 14 to 10, game two. Hannah Howell going for a third consecutive point from the service line. Gets it deep. And the ball blocked at the line. Kendall Coley, and now, oh! A little miscommunication there. Ball was up against the net. Windward was a little bit handcuffed. It just had to get it up, and nobody called it. Got to communicate out there in those situations. I would call that an unforced air by St. Louis Park. We want to keep those to a minimum. Now the serve by the Blaze. Number 11 with that was Frankie, or excuse me, that was number 10, Fred Hine. And Faith Johnson dinks it over the net and point goes to St. Louis Park. 15 to 11 is the score. They're 10 points from victory in game number two. Now Kendall Coley is out. Reagan Alexander back in, and Ward back to serve. Number eight in the white jersey. And the spike dink attempt does unsuccessful at the line was Reagan Alexander and Faith Johnson. With the intimidation factor, I would say right here, what is she gonna do? And yeah, tough. Ward, beautiful serve, dive, bump there, and Another violation in the net again. Blaze having a hard time, and now a timeout taken by Josh Westvet. It's his third of the match, first of this game, as he now sees his team down six after they were just down one. So Faith Johnson is reeled off along with Winward. Six or seven, six points here to get back to a comfortable lead here in game two. Blaze fighting very well. They listen to their coach as we look at their schedule. Coming up at Minneapolis South. So tonight is the 22nd. They've got five days off and then they'll travel back across the river from Burnsville to Minneapolis South. And then they host Albert Lee and Edina. Then they go to Shakopee, a two south of the river, south suburban rivals. Then they've got Rosemount. And then at Matamidi, another non-conference match. I don't think Matamidi is in the South Suburban. They're clearly east of the river and east of St. Paul, actually. So they're way out there. So that would be another non-conference mid-season matchup. But back here, it's 17 to 11 here in game two. St. Louis Park won game one, 25 to 15. Looking to close out game number two. Back to serve following the timeout, Addie Ward. And the timeout worked to some degree. Addie Warg was cruising, as was St. Louis Park. So good timeout taken by Westvet. Ends up in a point and the serve, and only down five. Good strategy move there by the Blazers head coach. And now back to serve number 12. That's Megan Hermstad, that's captain four. And now Berglund spikes, blocked at the net, and successful block. 
number 11 there, the freshman Kyla Frankie was in on that play. I don't know how much of the part of the ball she got, but she is a good player to watch for the Blaze. And now they have cut the lead to four. So the Blaze definitely challenging here in game two. Berglund, and nice job by Howell and Berglund. Back to Berglund, saving the ball and a chance for St. Louis Park to get this point. Now Berglund turns, spikes, goes deep and long. Little, she was scrambling there to get into place. It really wasn't as set as she would have liked to be, which is probably why that ball went long. And now it is 17-14, and Hermstead back to serve again, gets it in. Win, Ward, and the spike to Faith Hill, or excuse me, not Faith Hill, Faith Johnson, the junior outside hitter. There's Hannah Howell. There is Winward and Faith Johnson. Great combination. Now Johnson will serve with a four-point lead. Seven to go for the mat, or for the game, I should say. Johnson, nice dive in a tough spot, and it pays off. Or excuse me. Oh, that point went to the blaze, St. Louis Park. Must have been in the net, so now it is 15-18. And back to serve is Kara Clavins, number five, and she gets it in. Now Elsa Berglund with the spike, and she scores, and gets the ball back, 19-15 now. Six points from game number two. Burnsville has matched their point total of game number one, so definitely an improvement for them here in game two, but they still find themselves down four with six points left for St. Louis Park to close it out. Nice move there by Burnsville, and they try to save it. Wow. I think that was number 18, Shannon Murray, with the fake out there. Really caught St. Louis Park on their heels. I was even faked out. That was a heck of a play by her, and so she keeps Burnsville within three, and now they have the serve, and that is Julia Dam, another co-captain, and Reagan Alexander delivers the hurt there at the top there with that spike. Just when Burnsville's trying to creep back into it, the talent and the raw power shown right there as Reagan Alexander just slaps it. It's just all wrist. And now she'll serve. Five points from game number two. The jump serve. Gets it in. And pretty deep. Freshman. Now Hannah Howell delivers it. Nice save there by Hermstag for Burnsville, and a little confusion, but she turns and keeps it in. Nice play there by Fredheim, but the point goes to St. Louis Park on Kendall Coley's drop shot at the front line, and here's that replay right here. Boy, windward, and then look at the body control of, of number 12 Coley as she adjusts to the set and then prevents her body from going into the net. Great talent there. 21-16, four points from game number two. Winward to Coley, and she delivers. 22-16, St. Louis Park cruising here towards victory in game number two. Reagan Alexander going for her third consecutive point from the service line. St. Louis Park starting to smell blood here in game two. Alexander gets that ball deep. Big spike there by number 10. Emma Fredheim, not the first time I've mentioned her name. Boy, when she gets open and she's set, she is lights out. Watch this form, bang. Great extension, and she's got great aim there, splitting the defense there between Alexander and Elsa Berglund. Now the serve there by the freshman Phenom Frankie, and her ball sails off the back row, and now that's another point for the Blaze as they're hanging around but running out of time here at 22-18. And again, now the freshman, Kyla Frankie, five foot 10, a short ball this time. Winward to Coley, did it hit someone at the front line? It did not, that sailed long, and the point goes to the plays, and now they find themselves within three on the service hand of Kyla Frankie. Going for point number four in a row here, Faith Johnson to Howell. Nice save off the ceiling. Oh, number one, Anna Famasenkyo was able to save that very powerful spike by Howell, but it went off the ceiling and they were unable to play it. So Howell with the power there, definitely dominating. 
Now back to serve, Michaela Winward at 23-19. Hermstead with the bump, now Murray to Fredheim. Saved by Winward, then Ward, Howell off the back foot, finds Peter, stop, and that's a point. Again, Hannah Howell is the reason why they scored there. Well, it was a team effort, of course, but this shot, a little bit off her back foot. And look at that dive save, and then Faith Johnson actually scores the point at the net there. What a team here the Orioles have, folks. Winward, deep, Hermstad, Murray, Fredheim, Saved by Berglund, but off her wrist, or fist, it was a little awkward, so still game point, but 24-20. Murray is their last hope here. She's got to reel off four in a row here to stay in the match. And her serve, nice serve, Hannah Howell. Winward to Elsa Berglund. Stopped by off the ceiling again. This time the plays handle it. That's Anna number one, and in the net was Howell. So point goes to the Blaze, and we're at 24-21. Little tighter than Lissy Murano would prefer the head coach for the Orioles. That I can tell you now. Back to serve, Shannon Murray, five foot seven. She's their best server. Trying to tie it up here, down three. Winward, Faith Johnson from deep. Murray to Anna to Fredheim, and she lost that one long. And that's the game. It goes to Burnsville. 25-21, they lead 2-0 after two. Come on back for game number three. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit poolsafely.gov. Welcome back to Burn, or excuse me, St. Louis Park High School and Park TV 16 Sports production of Varsity Volleyball. We are bringing St. Louis Park hosting the Burnsville Brave in this non-conference Blaze. For, they used to be the Braves, now they are the Blaze. But this is the first match of the 2019 season for both teams. If you're just joining us, St. Louis Park won game one, 25 to 15, and game two, 25-21. And now the pivotal game three of this best of five as St. Louis Park wins game three. And they are down one nothing the first time in the entire match they've been down as Shannon Murray gets the blaze off to a good start here in game three. And they are building momentum and let's see if they keep improving here. Or St. Louis Park on the letdown. Kendall Coley digs it in there. Nice job by number 12 to dash any enthusiasm the Blaze had coming out of the gate here to begin game three. Nice job there by Ward getting that ball up to windward and then Coley finding the soft spot. Beautifully done by all three of those players. And it's one to one here in game three. Serve in for St. Louis Park. Elsa Berglund to windward to Faith Johnson. Stopped by Hermstad for the Blaze. Now Fretheim and she scores it. And that's the combination over there for the Blaze is getting that ball over to number 10. Emma Fretheim, the five foot nine junior outside hitter is causing problems for the Orioles all night long and more so in game two and then again here in game three. Missy Murano and the Orioles are gonna have to try to come up with an answer for her. 
But they barely won game two there by just four after a 10 point lead. Elsa Berglund struggling with that serve. Now Ward gets it over, chance for the Blaze. Murray to number six, Dam. Blocked at the front, Ward saves it. Spiked by Howell, blocked by Murray for the Blaze and she's unable to handle it and point to Park as they tie it up at two here in game three. Highly competitive non-conference matchup here between Burnsville and St. Louis Park. Two longtime suburban schools here in the Minneapolis metro area and that served by Hannah Howell into the net, another unforced hair. Only four that I can think of off the top of my head tonight. So really nice job by the Orioles. In the past in few seasons, they have had a lot of unforced airs at the service net, but clearly they have cut down on that, at least here in game one, and that is blocked at the net. And they're leading the charge is number 11. I've been calling her the rising star there for Burnsville. I've never seen her before, but just being a freshman and seeing the impact, and there she is right there, along with Julia Dam. Boy, they're only... Julia Dam is 5'8". As the Blades get another point, and now they have their largest lead of the evening here and in game three. Look at those two. That's 5'10 and 5'8 going against a taller Oriole line, and they are really giving them fits now at the front line. And Faith Johnson, though, ends that with the power, just sheer power by the Orioles. Boy, any pent-up aggression. Great therapy there to be a frontline spiker for the St. Louis Park Orioles, I'll tell you that. As they cut the lead and it to two, and that is Ward with the serve. And the freshman for the Blaze gets it in, and she'll have another chance. No, this time it goes to Julia Dam, and she'll have to dink it over. Now Ward in the back line. Now set to Elsa Berglund, blocked by Frenke. Now the freshman gets it over. Another chance for the Orioles. There's the set to Reagan Alexander, and it's blocked. But the point goes to St. Louis Park as it looked like the freshman, number 11, was in the net for the Blaze. Here's that replay. Ward, Winward. Oh yeah, got kind of frozen at the net there. And now a point to Burnsville as the scoreboard has gone out here. Now that's back on. And the Blaze now with a two-point lead at six to four. Substitution coming in number five is Kara Clevens, the five foot three junior. Coming in specifically to serve, obviously. With a six-four lead and off the net. Nice save there by Howell with the dive. Elsa Berglund with the deep spike. Saved by Murray. Damn, blocked at the net by Reagan Alexander and Faith Johnson. We're both there to make that play. Not sure which one actually touched it, but they were there together and watched them go together in synchronicity. And I think they both got a piece of it. Didn't touch the net. Cut the lead to five to six. And now Faith Johnson, and that's another unforced air. So you wonder if fatigue isn't gonna be setting in here for the Orioles, this being their first match. Play started at about seven o'clock. We're coming up on an hour, and this has been an intense game. A lot of energy being game number one. Oh my goodness. Look at that spike and look at the joy on Reagan Alexander's face. This is something else, folks. Bang! No chance there by number five, Kara Clevens. None. All right, Elsa Berglund now back to serve. I believe the score is tied. No, they're still down one. Elsa Berglund. Another unforced errors, and this really does illustrate what I've been saying tonight about unforced errors. They've doubled or tripled how many unforced errors they had in games one and two in game three on the service line alone. And that's gonna be fatigue here, mental fatigue and possibly physical fatigue. So that's gonna be the challenge here for St. Louis Park to close out this match with a three game sweep. And that ball sails out of bounds, and that's now .7 for Park, and Burnsville up by 1.87. I do believe St. Louis Park will eventually overpower the Blaze here, but the Blaze really playing well. 
and they are physically challenged compared to St. Louis Park at the height department, and they're number nine with the nice Teresa Glasgow, five foot ten senior. You know, I noticed her during warmups, and we have not called her name all night, and uh, she shows some talent out there. The five foot ten senior, surprising to me that she has not played a larger role in games one and two. I don't even think she played. I don't remember her if she had, and now that ball into the net, and also the Blaze looking like they're showing some fatigue. Still maintaining a one point lead here as we approach the midway point approximately of game three. And Winward gets it to the back net, Anna there, and now number 16, who I also noticed the warmest who hadn't played much, Riley Kupka, she's six foot tall junior. And now that's a point for Burnsville. And it's tied at nine, excuse me, that went to St. Louis Park. And now Winward will serve again. Score tied here. Gets it to the back row to Hermstead. And now Fremke delivers with that spike. As she shakes her head noddingly saying, yeah, I had it all the way, folks. Boy, one confident player. All these women are confident. Watch this. Bang. She takes down Kendall Coley. Number 10 is 5'9". Kendall Coley is 6'1". Doesn't matter how tall you are, if you have good skills, good fundamentals, and the desire to play well. You can take on the likes of Kendall Coley and Randall and Reagan Alexander. And Burnsville here takes a timeout. Or I believe St. Louis Park takes their first timeout. And they find themselves down by one point at 10 to nine here in game three. As we show you the website for parktv.org, go there for all your city needs. Questions will be answered and you can go to Park TV 16 to see our daily lineup on our several channels there, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 I think. 16 is where a lot of, oh a 96. So four channels, I believe. And coming out of the timeout, the Blaze here challenging. And there, Emma Fredheim, a big reason why the Blaze are hanging tough in game three. Hermstad, Murray, Fred tied, Fredheim, I should say. Now, windward to Kendall Coley. And she delivers the goods on that spike and ties it up at 10. That's what I mean by I think just the sheer power overall is going to get the best of the blaze. Like shots like that, what are you going to do? Looks like Coley took a little off that to get that to go down. Now, damn, nice save, jump, dive, save there by Howell. She's been diving all night long. And uh, she's got knee pads there. But she's tending to that right knee, just barely there, but nice job. And now it is 11 to 10 for the Blaze. Back to serve, number 12, Megan Hermstad. This five foot six senior gets it in. She's been a good player for the Blaze here. Now Elsa Berglund gets blocked at the net. Now back to Howell. Winward with the set to Faith Johnson, and she dinks it, saved by Hermstad. Now Murray, and to Kyla Riley Kupka. Stop, Howell though from the back line, stopped by Fredheim. Now here comes, damn, dinks it. Berglund kind of threw her fist up. I think Ward was there to maybe possibly play it. Berglund didn't know that, of course. But her fist uh, flailing at the ball, unable to save it. So now a two-point lead by the Blaze as we are at the halfway point. And that's a misplay in the back. Ball was not above the wrist there by Howell, so that's an infraction. And now a three-point lead midway through. We're exactly halfway through. They played a 25 here per game until game five, if there is one. Hermstead, Howell, Faith Johnson stopped by Murray. Now Hermstead to Kupka and her spike attempt into the middle of the net. She looks like she may have mistimed the jump. Now, Addie Ward, the senior. He 
Deep to Fredheim. Kupka, Ward. Winward to Elsa Berglund with the spike. Stopped by Herbstad. Now Murray with the bump set. And they're going to have to bump it over by Dam. Now Ward. And no one there to take it. Winward gets it to the front line. Now back to St. Louis Park. No communication. And the ball goes down. And a three-point lead again. Burnsville showing improvement all night long. Now coming in to serve is Karen Clevins, which has been their pattern tonight. Five foot three junior trying to extend the lead here with the serve. Howell, Winward, Reagan Alexander with the dink shot. Hermstead saves it on the far side. The freshman gets it over Warg with the save. Now Elsa Berglund delivers. Nice job by the outside hitter, number nine, coming up big. Stop the scoring streak by the Blaze. Look at that by Winward. Boy, Winward is just, you know, kind of an unsung hero on the set department. She, everything really goes through her. One great set after another by Winward, really setting up these spikers. Or hitters, I should say. Now Dam gets it over. Johnson tried to save it, but got caught up there too tight against the net for Reagan Alexander to do anything with it. So now Burnsville with another three-point lead as they now are 10 points from winning game three. Down to nothing here in the best of five from St. Louis Park High School. I'm Robert Christensen, glad you're with us. We're watching great volleyball action, that is for sure. Now that point goes to Park and they get the serve and there's the replay, Hermstead unable to save it and now there's Elsa Berglund. Jump serve, gets it into the back row. Hermstad bumps it to Fredheim, and Berglund saves it. Howell needs to go over, Winward gets it over. Back row, spike, shot to Fredheim. Boy, that was beautiful by the Blaze, folks. Just the body movement around there. Uh, they are really starting to get in sync here, and St. Louis Park is finding themselves in a deficit. Now the freshman, Kyla Frankie, the five foot 10 ninth grader mid hitter to try to extend the lead at 16-13. Reagan Alexander delivers the heat there from the front row. Now St. Louis Park within two, but they've been down most of game three here where they led all of games one and two. So this is a great mental challenge for them to try to close out a tough match here. They don't want to let Burnsville get this game and get back into this one. They're starting to show their firepower, like right here. Berglund gets it to the front row. Chance here for Howell, and she delivers. Was it in? It was. She found the opening along the sideline there. Wow, what a play here. Berglund, and then Winward again with the set. That's what I'm talking about by Michaela Winward, just making everyone look good and contributing to a lot of the scoring tonight. Nice save there by Winward, and this block spike attempt goes wide out. Burnsville now, two point lead at 17-15, and the service, and their best server, as Clavens gets high fives as she comes out after that service opportunity there, and now Murray. Johnson off the speaker. Howell with the spike, and she scores it. Unable to block it there was Kupka and number nine, Glasgow, for the Blaze. And now Winward back to serve. There again, Winward with the bump set. Made that easy for Howell to deliver that point on the spike. And now a chance to tie game three. Winward, and she finds it. Wow, what a serve. Ace, just when they needed it to tie it up. Catches them flat-footed. Hermstead pulls back, and look at that. A thing of beauty if you're Missy Murano, the head coach. And there is Michaela Winward, Winward, I should say. Really the glue of this team at this time. She asked for too much, and the Blaze were waiting for it. And they take a one-point lead again here, but now they're just seven from game three. Got to win by getting the 25 first. Back to serve now, Emma Fredheim, five foot nine junior, really been a thorn in St. Louis Park side, and this is a sign of fatigue. She relaxed, 
Starting to show a little tiredness, and that's why that ball sailed on her. And we're tied again at 18, and Hannah Howell, she takes a deep breath. Both these teams, this is their first game. It's a very warm gymnasium in here, folks. The doors are open. One end of the gym is usually open, so there's no airflow, and it is quite warm. And Elsa Berglund delivers a great spike, but save, and the spike, the save, and Holy, another save, over. Berglund can't save it. What a point there, folks. Coach Joss Westfeld, a little pump fist there. Fist pump, I should say. Look at that. And then the save by Murray. Then Hermstead just barely gets it over. Then the save there. And unable to get it from Windward was Berglund. 19-18 on that serve. And in the net is St. Louis Park. So they've really got to get their act together in terms of leadership. Calm down, they're well within this, getting this match back under control. But the Blaze now just five points from taking game three here, trying to prevent the sweep. Holy delivers the big, blocked at the front by the freshman. And the freshman delivers another point at the net. Sneaks it in under Coley, under her forearm there. And now they're just four points away. And a timeout wisely taken by Missy Murano and the St. Louis Park Orioles. As they are now looking at a possible loss here in game three, which would force game four in this best of five. Real quiet in the gym here as there's just been non-stop action all night long. As you look at Reagan Alexander, number 14, with her teammates. Over number 13, shoulder, that's Annie Holden. You look at Addie Warg, who's had a great match so far. And there still could be a lot of match left here, folks, if the Blaze can pull out here game three. We could be on our way to a five-setter. And there's the coach, Wenstad. He is a very happy guy. He's watched his team improve throughout the night. Yeah, and they're starting to believe. Look at the three players there, Murray, Hermstead and Fredheim, those three have been the heart and soul of the Blaze and their comeback and their improvement. And you can see the synergy among those three. Knowing nods back and forth. So St. Louis Park, gut check time for them here in game three. All bets are off if they don't get this one in my estimation. The Blaze are starting to play that well. Time to shut the door for the Orioles and they do there. Get that point out of the timeout. That's got to bring a big sigh of relief for Murano, the head coach. And now Coley comes out. Reagan Alexander comes back in. Faith Johnson on the front line, along with Elsa Berglund. Winward at the set position. Hannah Howell and now Ward to serve. They're six points from the win here. And they need to reel off some points here quick. And boy, another unforced air. Addie Ward, those are awful costly. Not only do you give up the serve, you give up a point. Now Burnsville, just three from game three, as Murray now comes in on the front line with the freshman and number six, Julia Dam, back to serve. There's number five, once again, Kara Clevin. Seems like she's serving every other time. And that ball was gonna go long. Berglund saves it miraculously. Look out, the freshman delivers again at the front line in the same fashion. It's almost like the front line for the Orioles are over jumping that and they've got to maybe adjust that and stop her, because watch what happens here. She just keeps it right at the net level. It's almost, see, they're too, almost too high. They got to just maybe just get their hands at that level and stop that. Look at that by Reagan Alexander. Just in time here, 23-20. And Faith Johnson, who reeled off eight or nine in a row in game one. Boy, do they need her to come up big time. They cannot afford any more on four stairs at the service line, down 23. Ball over, chance here for St. Louis Park if they handle it right. Berglund blocked at the net, now it's trouble, and that's gonna go to St. Louis Park. Yep, no violations at the net. Wow, we are right down to it, and a timeout here by Burnsville. We're at 23-21, watch the replay. And that was Winward with the touch and the body control along the net there. Boy, we are right on the razor's edge because even a missed serve results in a point for Burnsville. 
So St. Louis Park has really got to play perfect here for the next couple points to get back and tie this up. As we look at St. Louis Park government's Facebook page, another place to access information to and from your government officials. Well run city, St. Louis Park. Burnsville, they're out there, they're ready to go, they're confident, here come the Orioles. Some of the fans are standing, they see how exciting this is. In the back row behind St. Louis Park, those girls are standing. Some of the parents here are standing on the near side and we're about to begin here, 23-21, game three, Faith Johnson to serve. Murray. The dink, and it scores, and it's now game point. 24-21, back to serve the senior for the Blaze, Julia Dam, five foot eight, outside hitter, senior. Boy, they took the lead here early in game three, and they've held it throughout, and it sails. Mental air there by the Blaze, and it's 24-22. And back to service, Elsa Berglund. These have got to be in. If, it, if she doesn't get it in, it's game over for game three. Big time pressure here on Elsa Berglund. And that ball goes deep. And beautiful serve right at the knees of Hermstead. And boy, it is dicey now, folks. Timeout by Burnsville. They're going to try to freeze Elsa Berglund. That's exactly why that timeout was taken. Berglund delivers big time with a deep, here it is, big time mental play there by Berglund. Gets it deep and really had Hermstead there back footed and off balance. I think she was surprised that Berglund went for so much. That took a lot of guts for Elsa Berglund. Very impressive. Outside hitter, sophomore. A lot of pressure on her shoulders coming into game three. Got to get the ball in. And I have never seen this kind of enthusiasm here at a volleyball match in St. Louis Park in my three plus years of doing it. As I thought coming into this season, there would be a lot of excitement and boy is there ever. August 22nd, 70 degrees outside and we've got a gym full of people watching girls volleyball, really exciting. Okay, Elsa Berglund after the timeout to Freezer. Ball's going to be in. Murray to Fredheim. That's their best, and it's in, and that's the game. What a way for the Blaze to win it. On the hand of Fredheim, Emma Fredheim delivers the dagger for game three, and it's two to one. Come on back for game number four. We are there, day one, with baby names and a gift that lasts a lifetime. We are there as you grow, protecting you and those you love. We are there when you get your first job, helping you to save for the future. We are there when you marry your sweetheart to help secure your new life together. We are there if the unexpected happens to help you see life from a new perspective. We are there when you start your next chapter to make sure you get off to a great start. And we are there when you lose your soulmate to help make sure you will be all right. We are with you through life's journey. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Get to know us and see what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Welcome back to St. Louis Park High School and Park TV 16 sports production of Girls Varsity Volleyball. We are about to begin game four of this incredibly exciting matchup in game one for both teams. We are featuring St. Louis Park taking on Burnsville. And we are about to begin game four. If you're just joining us, St. Louis Park got off to two dominating wins in games one and two, but then lost by a narrow margin in game three. And now we're about to begin game four, and that is Michaela Winward. 
for the Orioles to lead it off here in game four. And they get point number one. So off to a good start here. They dominated those first two games and then the Blaze have been showing improvement throughout the night and they got the lead in game three and hung on despite the Orioles making a furious comeback at the end to hold on to win by just two. So now we'll see if things can settle down for both teams and St. Louis Park can close out this first match of the season. And they give up that point, so we're tied at one here in game four. And back to serve is Shannon Murray, number 18, five foot seven junior. One of the three major players on the Brave team. Blades, I should say. They used to be the Braves, now they're the Braves. And that serve by Murray finds the open space on the floor despite the diving Addy Ward. And now it's two to one, Burnsville. And now Ward is ready for that one, but it sails out of bounds as it crosses the net. So a little bit of a lack of focus here, it seems to me, by St. Louis Park. After the first two wins. It's definitely a lack of energy over there on the bench as Elsa Berglund goes out. And now it's four to one to the Blaze here and they are still picking up steam and they are, their bench is on the edge of their seats and I look at St. Louis Park and they're kind of uh, deep in their seats. Kind of not knowing what to do here. Need to get a spark of some kind as Howell's ball sails. So mentally, I'm afraid the Orioles have just sort of uh, lost their focus here. Maybe their confidence a little bit as well. And they need to find a way to get that mojo back here. And they could be in trouble in this match as Coley gets blocked at the line. And Johnson gets blocked at the front at the net. And now they misplay that as Howell goes down. So wow, what a turnaround in team personalities. Really needing uh, some leadership here. And now that serve goes and St. Louis Park had their backs to the net. Got lucky there that it went into the net. They weren't even ready there in that one, so. Something needs to kick in here mentally, and now maybe Hannah Howell can deliver that with a serve here. And she does get one down nicely, saved there by Hermstead. Kupke gets it over, and that ball drops, so everything seemed to go the Blazes' way as they now open up a 7-2 lead here in game three. Or game four, excuse me. Back to serve. Emma Fredheim, a big star here for the Blaze. Amazing spikes to get the Blaze back into this match by winning game three. Now, Elsa Berglund delivers. Blocked. Now over to Kupke, blocked at the net. Ward dives, gets it over the net. And nice block there at the net there by Coley, I believe. And she'll take a seat, and in comes Reagan Alexander. Yep, Coley gets that down, and look at that scream of frustration. That's good, see some life out of the Orioles. And now back to serve is Addie Ward. There's still just one game from winning the set, but boy, another unforced error. So really, a night and day difference, I hate to say that, but it really is that evident so far. The number of unforced errors in games three and now here early in game four, really spelling the difference for the Orioles in the scoreboard. Now Faith Johnson delivers it. What a save by Kermanstad, and then Dam tried to save it as well. Boy, they are really good at digging shots out by the Orioles, as example right here. Exemplified, I guess would be the word. Four to eight now, and that ball sails long again. Faith Johnson, another unforced error. I think they only had three in games one and two, and now they've had probably a dozen in games three, and here early in game four as they find themselves down five, and now coming in, the ace server for the Blaze, Kara Clevens. 
Addie Ward to Windward, and that ball sails out. Another unforced error. St. Louis Park looking to right the ship here, folks. As Clavins now goes for her second serve. Scoreboard is out. 10 to four is your score. Six point lead, Ward gets it over. But a chance for the Blaze. And they are now on cruise control at 11 to four here. Seven point lead. And a timeout taken by Marissa Morano who looks a little exasperated herself there over on the sideline. Needing to find a way to stoke the fire here of her Orioles squad as they are now in jeopardy of losing game four and allowing the Blaze to force a game five here in their first match at home. So a real mental test here early on for the Orioles to get it going. So some serious conversation as now we look at Josh Wenstead, who's really just been a great cheerleader on the sideline as they got off to a pretty poor start in games one and two scoring just 15 or 21 points. But that was a nice improvement there in game two and that gave their squad momentum. And they came out in game three, got a lead and held on at the end to win. And they have just picked up where they've left off here in game four. And there's Wentz, Wast Vet, W-A-S-T-V-E-D-T, Wast Vet, I believe is how you pronounce that. As you look at some of the up and comers in the St. Louis Park Volleyball Program, very enthusiastic. Fans. They've got a great program here at St. Louis Park, but they've got their work cut out for them now with the South Suburban non-conference full of the Burnsville Blaze. Glad you're with us. If you love volleyball, you're watching some great action. And now another air by St. Louis Park out of the timeout. So it just seems to me that they've lost their focus here. It is only August 22nd. School hasn't started for at least another week or two. So it is a little early to be playing matches. So they might still be a little bit on summer vacation, which I wouldn't blame them. Having played fall sports myself, I don't remember playing any matches until the very, very end of August, if not till after Labor Day. All right now, Elsa Berglund down seven. Still time in this match to get it back in there. Now they got a point off their serve. 12 to six. Start over, there's Winward with a smile. Yeah, they gotta get back to smiling and having fun out there and just kinda, just find it back. They just gotta find that groove back. They're a better team than the Blaze, I believe. Much more talented, they just gotta get that groove. And they were a little scared there and now they just gotta lighten up here, relax, have fun, and uh, let their natural talents come to the fore. But then again, another unforced air. They've gotta eliminate those unforced airs. I would be hammering that home to them if I were their head coach. Just eliminate those and you're in this match. Oh, nice job there by Reagan Alexander. Not a great setup, but she was able to save it for a point and the serve there. And now we'll have a substitution. First time in the match now, number 13, the junior libero, Annie Holden, will come in to serve. So Murano now trying to Shake up the lineup here, trying to get something going off the bench. And that unfortunately does not work out so well as that serve goes into the net and she'll come right back out and back in will come Alexander and also coming in is Addie Ward. We'll take the place of Reagan Alexander. So now on the front line is Winward, Howell, and Coley. And this will go to Howell. And she delivers, boy. Blaze, they always have a second person ready to save those spikes. So they're a good matchup here for the Orioles who are very, very heavy on the front line with their height and power. And the Blaze are really good at digging those out. Now Winward with the serve. She had a great service game in game one and now another one here in game four. And she cuts the lead to five. And the gym is starting to cool down a little bit. You can feel the cool air. They've got the doors open to the outside. But again, one side of the gym to the main school, because it's probably not open yet, is totally shut, which is making it a little bit more like a sauna effect here. And another consecutive point for St. Louis Park. 
And now they seem to be finding their uh, joy in playing volleyball again. Starting to get their confidence a little bit back. Winward needs to keep serving well here to keep that going as they're now down just four here in game four. Ball to the back, it's in. And, oh, that was going out. Can they save it? Winward does save it. Dink, now Ward, Winward. Coley dinks it, now she sets it back to Winward. Now to Faith Johnson, and it's blocked at the net by number nine and 10. That's Glasgow and Fredheim. Glasgow is 5'10", Fredheim is 5'9". Not supremely tall, but boy, very effective with the block there. And now a substitute, Murray in to serve. She's their best server and co-captain. The junior gets it in and now Coley delivers, barely. Boy, the Blaze, they are a really good defensive volleyball team. Watch Coley just slap it and they dang near, dang near. Block that, but just the net saves her. So now Howell to serve. And that ball is deep. And I thought I heard a whistle, and that's a violation on the Blaze. Now it's a third consecutive point. It's 15 to 12. And the Orioles are coming back, and now a timeout taken by the Blazes. Head coach Josh West, Wasvet, he recognizes a chance to try to stop the oncoming momentum by the Orioles. So good timeout taken by the Blaze there. Now they'll talk it over. They're seeing their lead dwindle now to just three. Or is it two? For some reason, the scoreboard flips off here from time to time. But there's the score there, 15 to 12 on our scoreboard on your screen there as we look at the blaze. And there you can see the wide shot of the gym. The blaze usually comes out of their timeout sooner, even though Wasvet called it. He really didn't probably have much to say other than just some words of encouragement, really more just to stop the, uh, the mo momentum of the Orioles as they were mounting a comeback there and to find themselves down just three. All right, now St. Louis Park coming out. Howell now with three consecutive points on serve. See if the timeout by Wasfed and the Blaze will have an effect on her service game and she gets it in. And Murray launching, Kupke blocked at the net. Windward going the wrong way. Warg now trying to save it to Bergland and she's unable to handle that. That's a tough play there. Ball coming as she's running towards the net. The ball is also going towards the net. So tough to know where you are in the court as you're looking up as you're running towards the net trying to play the ball at the same time. And now they're down four. Powell with the bump. Now Faith Johnson and she scores it. So the Orioles definitely improved here from early on here in game four. Nice job there by Howell, just holding that position there, knowing that that ball was tipped in front. And now Ward struggling here a little of late from the service line. Normally a very steady server needs to get one in here. And she takes a little off of it, just get it in. It's more important to get it in than to have the power on the serve in there. Just getting in, leads to a point. Faith Johnson able to play that easy one right at the net. Definitely a sense of uh, light lightness now among the Orioles. Boy, they were really showing some heavy energy there as they were down, but now they're coming back just down two here in game four. What a great comeback it would be if they can get this game and the match. Now Winward, Johnson, Murray, the dam blocked at the net by Johnson and Berglund unable to save it as it found the soft spot in the St. Louis Park defense. Kind of by accident, serendipity if you will. Park now down three as we now are getting to the later stages of game four. The Blaze trying to even it up here in this best of five. And Reagan Alexander right into the freshman. Kaya Franke, the five foot 10 ninth grader. There she is right there in the middle. Let's see if she gets a hand. No, actually it was her counterpart there to the right. Who got the block. And they've got to find a way to get around that on their spikes. And there's Faith Johnson delivers. 
Big time shot there by Johnson. Beats the block and the back row there. Fredheim, boy, they're, they're a tough team to beat here. Faith Johnson now down three serving. She's one of their better servers along with Winward. Be nice to see her rail off five or six. And there's Winward to Elsa Berglund and she scores it. So now things are starting to break a little bit more of the Orioles' way as they're now down two here. Trying to come back to get game four and win this match three to one. And a substitution now, Fredheim comes out. In comes number two, Karina Benson, another freshman at five foot seven. Johnson to serve. And that sails long. Boy, it's like she caught that hard part of her palm there. Cause that ball just took off off her palm. I wonder if she just caught that bone a little harder and just that just caught the ball perfectly. That ball just took off, even though it didn't look like she hit it very hard. So now three-point lead again for the Blaze. Back to serve is Kara Clavens. She's their serve ace. She usually comes in just to serve. Now Winward to Bergwin, and she gets it to go down. Beats the freshman phenom for the Blaze this time. And now she'll come back to serve. I always like that combination. When you make a point at the net, you come back and serve. You got the momentum. You've got the confidence. But Park still down two, unable to get over that last little hurdle in their comeback attempt. And now, nice serve by Berglund. And boy, that ball was really deep in the second row. And Hermstad, usually pretty steady back there, unable to handle it. Now Berglund feeling it right now. Can she continue it? Down one, trying to tie it. Here comes Jams and Berglund. Ward to Hannah Howell, and it goes off the arm of Benson, and another point, and now we're tied at 19 in game four. Ward to Hannah Howell, who went back to the left, and the momentum of Benson for the Blaze, unable to corral that ball, and she'll come out, and now Fredheim will come in, and boy, she's dangerous from this left side, folks. Berglund now going for her third point, fourth overall. Gets that deep, and another great big time serve by Berglund. Three in a row, four total. Josh Wasvet takes time out, and the St. Louis Park have the first lead in nearly two games after winning games one and two, and that brings a standing ovation from the home crowd. Lots of enthusiasm by both teams and their Sophomore and junior varsity teams. Wow, great enthusiasm. Never seen anything like this at a volleyball match during the regular season. My guess is the state tournament gets this exciting, but boy, oh boy, great enthusiasm, great to see. Park TV 16 Sports bringing you all the action. I'm Robert Christensen, glad you're with us. I'm glad I'm here. This is really exciting stuff. If you like volleyball, this is a war, folks. 20 to 19, game four. St. Louis Park up two to one, trying to close out their first match of the year at home against a non-conference rival in Burnsville. And now Berglund trying to go for her fourth point on server, fifth overall in a row. And that ball goes long. Timeout works for Watsvet. I could see it on his face. I looked right at him. Very pleased with that. So that icing of Berglund worked, and we're tied at 20. First one to five wins, folks. Faith Johnson, windward to Howell. Off the back row, Hermstead unable to handle it. And the power of St. Louis Park starting to emerge as we have substitutions on both sides of the net. Coming in is number one, Anna Famasenkio, and there's number 13. So, Murano going back to Annie Holden, who came back in for the first time in the match to serve into the net. Let's see if she can do a better job, and that is a nice knuckler cross. No spin on that. And that is a nice dink shot by number 10, Emma Fredheim. Ties it at 21. I don't think you got to win by two, so it's first team to 25. Nicely placed there 
Now back to serve is the freshman, five foot ten, Kyla Frankie. Gets it in. Berglund to Winward. Howell off her back foot. Now Murray, a chance for Fredheim as she delivers another spike. And boy, St. Louis Park has not been able to come up with an answer at the net for Fredheim. She has hurt them all night long. And there she is, having a heck of a night. Blaze trying to get this one. They're up 22-21. Three points from game four and tying this five game match. Ward, Winward, chance for Howell. The freshman gets it. The dig shot by Murray. Full St. Louis Park. And now it's 23-21. Burnsville, two points from game four and tying this match and timeout taken by Missy Murano, the head coach of the Orioles. My goodness, I can't remember a more exciting volleyball match. And it's only August 22nd. What more great sports action will we be bringing you from Park TV 16 Sports? Listen to this crowd cheer on their Orioles. They certainly don't want to lose game, the first match here. They would like to prevent a game five. We're in a very, very warm gym. It's got to be 80 degrees in here at least. And for a first game, late August, dog day evening, volleyball matchup. You'd think the state tournament was on the line here, folks. Great energy, great excitement. Glad you're here with us. Okay, we're about to begin. Out of the timeout, back to serve is the freshman for Burnsville deep. Johnson with the dig. Now to Hannah Howell, and she delivers. 23-22. Now back to serve. Just who you want to see if you're an Oriole fan. Michaela Winward, the senior, out ready to try to tie it up here. Serve, gets it over. Anna to Murray, to Fredheim, look out. Ward saves it, just barely beats the I-beam above the net, and the dink catches St. Louis Park, and now it's game point, and the serve goes to Murray and the Blaze with a chance to tie it up here two games apiece. Boy, they were down 2-0. Held on to win game three, and now about ready to close out game four. Ward, Winward to Cole Lee, and she delivers! Game, game point number one in game four, thwarted. They gotta win by two, okay, that's good to know. Well, this is still game point then. Permitting, Murray, Cupkey Ward, chance here for St. Louis Park. Faith Johnson had the dink and unfortunately looked out. Here comes Fredheim, has the dink in and it goes out. And we're tied at 24. What a match here. People on their feet. There's Murray. This is a classic volleyball match. If you're just joining us, watch it again on our channels on YouTube, and that into the net, and now it's game point for St. Louis Park. Suddenly, they have been down for the last 45 minutes of this match, and suddenly they are at match point for the first time. One hour and 40 minute match in a hot gym. To close it out, Hannah Howell with the serve, deep. Kupke, Ward saves it. Winward to Berglund. And we got a violation, and they win it. Point goes to St. Louis Park. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. That's your match on the violation. St. Louis Park comes back in game four to win the match three to one. For Paul Broden, our producer, and everyone connected with our production on Park TV 16 Sports, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.